Happy New Year's Eve. This is the tw this is the 31st of December. Can you believe it? It's uh, Lentalk number 194 and we are about ready to enter into a whole new year. And I I want to begin by just saying a, a blessed new year to all of you and and I, I we continue our uh, our Christmas tide the passage I've chosen for this New Year's meditation and um, uh, reflection is the epistle reading that begins when the fullness of time had come. This is Ephesians 4, I mean Galatians uh, 4, 4. And I'm titling the, this, this New Year's Eve meditation, Henceforth from Now on. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. The hour grows late and a new year's dawns. We stand in the pregnant pause between what has been and what will be. So let's consider this gift of time, as Paul puts it, the fullness of time. And what it means to live in that fullness in the time that we're in. We're all, we're all going to be held accountable, not for some other time, but for the time that we're in. Time flows ever onward, carrying all things away. Memories, dreams, even, even lives. How many people close to you have died this past year in 2023? So we remember we pass this way only once. How shall we number our days, as the Bible puts it, so that we may apply our hearts to, to wisdom? Now, the season of Christmas tide from December 24th to January 5th, because January 6th is Epiphany, which is where the Eastern Orthodox tradition celebrates Christmas. But this 24 December to 5 January, technically Christmas tide, is what I like to call the Maranatha season. The scriptures end with this word Maranatha. Now we translate it, come Lord Jesus, or come quickly Lord Jesus. But it's a deeper word than that. We are sent out, the Bible sends us out, the last word to us, it ushers out us out into the world to be Maranatha disciples. Come, Lord Jesus. But Maranatha is an Aramaic word, which in its Aramaic form, because it has a Greek form too, but in its Aramaic form is a word with three tenses, all three tenses at the same time. So you get past, present, and future in this one word, Maranatha. So it's not just come, Lord Jesus, but Lord Jesus has come, Lord Jesus is come, and Lord Jesus is coming. We, we, we talk about the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come. Or you can just say, Maranatha. Now, the one who was... is timely. The one who is, is timeless. And the one who is to come is timeful. Now, the, the rest of this passage from, from Galatians 4, um, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And if children, then heirs. So the new year 2024 is our heirloom. How are we going to claim our heirloom? Now, there's a, there's a wonderful uh, French word, desormais, that we translate as henceforth. Desorme, but which literally means, as does henceforth, if you break it down, from now on. Did you hear that? From now on, from past, now, present, on, future. So you, in English, the closest thing to Aramaic is henceforth, one word, from now 
on. In a Jesus-designed life, lives all three of these words from now on simultaneously. And that's what moves time from Kronos to Kairos time. A desorme life squeezes together the past from the present, now, the future, on. And desorme from now on, discipleship is a life that's distilled out of the past, instilled, I mean, installed in the present, but instilled by the future. Let me, let me get that, say that again. It's distilled out of the past. It's installed in the present, but it's instilled by the future. With that, what that means is that deaths are made disciples here in surround sound, the warnings of the dead, the longings of the living, and the beckonings of the unborn. We await the Desorme with a capital D, the great henceforth with a capital H, which means from now on, when eternity breaks fully into time. So many conversations today revolve around identity. National identity, ethnic identity, religious identity, gender identity. We even got a sporting identity. In the biblical conversations, though, always identity is inseparable from an encounter and a relationship with God. And identity is never just a self-identity. It's always a God identity. And part of our identity comes from the past, is shaped by the present. But part of our identity, we need to remember this as we enter this new year, lies in the future, ahead of us, beyond us. We are always in the state of becoming, becoming what we shall be. And I guarantee you in 2024, 2024 God is full of surprises. 1 John 3, 2. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. Now, we see a hint of what we shall be in the past and in the present. We see in each other a hint of what we shall be. And, and we know, we've experienced this, that some things communicate before they are understood. I mean, that, that's the power of poetry. That's why we have intuition. God gave us intuition, a sixth sense, if you will. We have hunches. Um, hunches, the, all these things come to us from the future, what we shall be. The, the image that, um, the best one that I, I can come up with is, you gotta imagine a river. And the river is constantly flowing, but that river is constantly changing. And the present moment is like the current of the river. It's always moving forward. And it's always different from the moment before it. The past is like the water that has already flowed past. It's no longer present, but it has shaped the river that we see today. The future is like the water that has not yet flowed past. So you're, you're standing in the river, and what you see in front of you as the water's passing forward, you're actually seeing the past. But in back of you is coming the future. From here on, possibilities. A multiplicity of possibilities that we can choose from as it comes past us. And so that reminds us, just as we think about time and the nature of time, a biblical view of history is not rise and fall, but exile, wilderness, and paradise. Henceforth in exile, henceforth in wilderness, henceforth in paradise. From now on, in exile, wilderness, and paradise. I come from a tradition. My mother was ordained in the Pilgrim Holiness Church. If I could choose a name for a denomination today, I, I, don't, I couldn't do better than Pilgrim Holiness. I love that. Pilgrims. Life is a pilgrimage. 
All of life is a pilgrimage, a pilgrimage to glory, a pilgrimage from paradise lost, in paradise found, to paradise eternal. And we live in the tension and ambiguity of these three time zones, past, present, and future, playing out at the same time. Paradise lost, paradise, paradise regained, paradise eternal. And in the overlap of paradise lost and paradise regained and paradise eternal lies this narrow wilderness. And the question is, will we waste time, these fleeting moments of time, circling the same mountains? Or will we press onward to our promised land in 2024? God is calling you, the Joshua generation, to lead God's people into fuller freedom. But the night is far spent. The night is falling. And how shall we shine ever brighter toward that perfect day? where our life's glory is not behind, but ahead. Like Abraham, we see the city of God from afar and journey on with patient hope. For we know in part and prophesy in part until that which is perfect comes and that which is partial passes away. So we take heart. This New Year's midnight hour reminds us that, how does the Bible put it, that weeping endures for the night, but joy comes with the morning. So lift up your hearts and faint not. Maranatha disciples, now we are children of God and what we will be has not yet appeared. But I promise you this, God's tomorrows eclipse all our sorrows. Let me say that again. God's tomorrows eclipse all our sorrows. So we pledge ourselves anew that we squeeze all our days, have been, are, will be, into this pregnant now and live wholly for the sake of an identity that finds its ground in God. Maranatha. Even so, Lord Jesus, welcome 2024. Make us ready for that great day. Now, as I was growing up, I we couldn't go to New Year's Eve parties. So we spent New Year's Eve traveling around to watch night services. I don't know if ever, how many of you ever heard of this. Um, this is something that John Wesley started. He actually it began with um, covenant services, which he introduced in 1775. And it was a renewal service. It didn't initially take place New Year's Eve, but then it came to be located New Year's Eve. And the covenant service blended into a, a love feast, blended into, and it, all collectively, the covenant and the love feast were called the watch night service. So the, the saints would gather while the rest of the world is partying, watching balls ascending and descending. They, they would gather and bring in the new, new year with with a love feast, with conversation, testimony, and a covenant a ritual. Um, I, love, I love how John Henry Newman, in his Meditations on Christian Doctrine, um, it is 1848, this is how he put it, God has created me to do him some definite service. He has committed some work to me which he has not committed to another. I have my mission. I may never know it in this life, but I shall be told it in the next. I am a link in a chain, a bond of connection between persons he has not created me for naught. And so the covenant service on New Year's Eve was a time when people of faith gathered together with one another to a, for a deeper understanding of who we are, why we're here. We don't need to know all the details, the whys and the wherefores. God knows them, and that's enough. So we dedicate our lives and reaffirm the covenant um, to do precisely that, put our hands and our future in God's hands. Um, and um, here on New Year's Eve, I'm suggesting you might want to consider beginning the new year 2024, renewing 
your covenant with your maker and having your people renew their covenant with their maker. And the, the service, I'm not going to give you the, I've kind of updated the language a little bit and um, using some other resources that have taken the, the these and nows and the, some of the stilted archaic language of the original covenant service. I also wrote a, my own version of the covenant uh, prayer, which I will um, share some other time. It, it's a, I call it a manifesto of an I am out of control disciple. I've given up my control to God. I trust and obey the spirit. And it goes on from there. But, um, but here I just want to have you reconsider and listen again to this original covenant service with some updated language that John Wesley introduced in 1775 and has been part of the whole Methodist tradition ever since in its various, its various forms. Um, here's the proclamation where the leader says, Dearly beloved brothers and sisters, the Christian life is a life found in Christ, redeemed from sin and consecrated to God. We are those who have entered into this life and have been admitted into the new covenant of Jesus Christ. He is the mediator of this covenant. He sealed it with his own blood so it would last forever. On one side of this covenant stands God who promises to give us new life in Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. Every day, God proves God's goodness and grace to us, showing us that God's promises still stand firm. On the other side, we stand as those who promise to no longer live life for ourselves. That's a hard one. But instead to only live life for Christ because he has loved us and given his life for us. There are times in our lives when it is important for us to remember and reaffirm our promises and vows. In this same way, we come together tonight to renew our covenant with God. Many generations have done this before us. Today we make the covenant our own, renewing with both joy and sincerity the covenant that binds us all to God. And so the confession is one that people would stand and recite together. We are those who seek to live as true disciples of Jesus Christ. Sometimes we fall short. Let us now examine ourselves before God, humbly confessing our sins and submitting our hearts so that we do not deceive ourselves and cut ourselves away from God. Let us pray. Father God, you have set forth the way of life through your son, Jesus Christ, whom you love dearly. We shamefully confess that we've been slow to learn of him. We've been reluctant to follow him. You have spoken and called to us, but we have not listened. You have revealed your beauty to us, but we have been blind. You have stretched out your hands to us through our friends, but we have passed by them. We, we have accepted your gifts and offered little thanks. We are unworthy of your unchanging love. Jesus Christ, we offer you this prayer, and here it is. I'm going to be uh, printing this, uh, publishing this, posting this in the see below section of this Lent talk. So if you want to use this, I'll, I'll attach it to this, this vlog in the see below section. Here it is. And the people would say this together. Let me be your servant. Let me follow your commands. I will no longer follow my own desires. I give myself completely to your will. I am not my own. I am yours alone. Make me into what you will. Rank me with those you will. Put me to use for you. Put me to suffering for you. Let me be employed for you. Let me be laid aside for you. Let me be lifted high for you. Let me be brought low for you. Let me, full, let me be full or let me be empty. Let me have all things or let me have nothing. With a willing heart, I freely give everything to your pleasure and disposal. Before all heaven and earth, I here and now acknowledge you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as my Lord and my God. I vow to give all of myself, body and soul, to be your servant and to serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of my life. Amen. What a great way to begin the new year. 
make little little printouts, decorate them a bit, pass them out to everybody to remind them of this covenant vow that they made between themselves, this body of Christ, of which they're a part, and the very being of God. I am no longer my own. I am yours. Or as the faith's fiat put it by the one who said it by the name of Mary, mother of Jesus, let it be to me according to your will. Henceforth, from now on.